This video contains main scenario quest spoilers up to patch 6.0 and makes reference to side content as recent as patch 6.4's Savage Raids. Hello and welcome. Today we're going to be taking a critical look at the expansion's second extreme trial from patch 6.0, the minstrel's ballad Heidelin's Call. I'd like to note that this video is not intended to be a guide, but instead is a critique of the encounter's mechanics and aesthetics. As such, this video is an opinion piece, so if you agree or disagree with my thoughts, feel free to give the video a like or dislike and leave a comment. I'll do my best to read them all. Moving on, let's talk about the mechanics side first. When analyzing the mechanics of this fight, it's important to keep in mind that Heidelin is the second of two Extreme Trials released with Patch 6.0, the launch of the Endwalker expansion. The trend that Square Enix has established over the past few expansions is that the two Extreme Trials released in expansion launches are tuned to be entry-level high-end duties to prepare would-be raiders for harder content. As such, they are somewhat easier than the average Extreme, so I'll give this fight a lot of leeway for this reason. I want to specifically note that this time that for this video and the one on the prior trial, I'm specifically referencing a new raider's experience as well as what these trials can teach them because I feel that this is the purpose of the difficulty tuning of expansion launch extremes. In future videos in this series covering Savage, Ultimate, and even later Extreme Trials, I'm planning to move away from considering this perspective as heavily as I am in these first two videos. Heidelin Extreme is a very traditional style FF14 high-end duty encounter. Heidelin starts in the center of the arena with a very normal sized targeting ring relative to her size, which is worth mentioning because at this time in the content cycle, we did not yet know that a significant increase to the average size of box hitboxes would occur as the expansion goes on. A phenomenon that we'll definitely be discussing in future videos, but in the meantime it does mean that the traditional considerations should matter in this fight, like carefully chosen spread patterns or boss positioning to allow melees to keep their uptime as well as dodge timing and positioning. The fight is split into what I would call three phases, with the first introducing a callback to the solo duty from Endwalker where Heidelin, as the previous Azim, first shows off her expertise in multiple styles of combat, just like we do as Warriors of Light. This manifests in the trial as a symbol of the Mother Crystal with one of three randomly selected weapons on it rotating around the boss. These symbols indicate an AoE shape that will occur shortly after. A red crystal with a dancer's chakram means Heidelin will do a large donut shaped AoE. A green one with a white mage's staff indicates a medium point blank AoE around the boss, which is notably larger than max melee distance. And finally, a blue one with a paladin sword indicates that a plus shaped AoE will occur. The green point blank AoE being larger than max melee is actually rather interesting in hindsight because it has more in common with certain parts of Shadowbringer's raid design where many mechanics forced melee and tank players out of melee range while the boss was still targetable. Players who could briefly move their character out of melee range during the snapshot with good timing could still keep full up time through those mechanics. In later fights, which we'll explore in later videos, we'll see that the trend towards larger average target ring size leads to more mechanics giving full uptime at max melee, which many players see as a regression in raid design because when mechanics of this type are safe at max melee, players don't have to work for their uptime by optimizing movement in this way. These red, green, and blue AoEs are used in combination with light party stacks on healers, or one large stack for the group, or individual spreads on each player right afterward depending on which element Heidelin channeled after the prior crystallized cast, water, earth, or ice respectively. This asks players for a little bit more individual responsibility and agency in their mechanical participation than the prior Extreme Trial Zodiac, as players don't completely follow the leader but instead will have to move more independently to resolve these dodge into stack or spread sequences. Astute players will realize that memorization is not required as the elemental aspect gained from Crystallize will remain present around the boss model's hands until the mechanic resolves. The first phase also has a stack, raid-wides, a red stack indicator with two orbs on it indicating tanks stacked together and share a tank buster, 
And finally, this phase introduces Oriel and Lateral Oriel, where either a thin cone on either side of Hydaelyn will be safe, or a thin cone at the front and rear will be safe. While the mechanic itself isn't exactly the most interesting, introducing it here in the second trial of Endwalker is a good design idea because it introduces the idea of the same mechanic having two patterns randomly selected with a telegraph for which pattern it will be. Other mechanics that can fit this description appeared in normal mode dungeons during Endwalker MSQ and of course in past raids and trials, but for Endwalker high-end duties, as a launch extreme trial it feels like it has a purpose in training newer raiders on an important concept for raiding in Final Fantasy XIV, because while the patterns and context will be different, we will be seeing mechanics with multiple variants, indicated by telegraph, frequently going forward, and cast bars, which are the most attention-grabbing telegraph for most players are the simplest telegraph to start this concept with. So while simple, I like the Oriel and Lateral Oriel used here. The adds phase introduces some tank responsibility as two main adds spawn and tether to the nearest of six crystals spread around the room, which must be destroyed to clear the phase. Tanks pull them around the room opposite of the party who destroys the crystals that they are near. It's great because those adds, back in 6.0 gear, did enough damage for tanks to need to cycle their personal mitigations appropriately while also pulling an enemy around the arena and paying attention to the party's progress on each crystal between movements. The rest of the party needs at least enough coordination to focus down the untethered crystals in an agreed upon direction around the room. As a tank main myself, I love mechanics like this. Some of my favorite adds phases in the game are ones where tanks have to move their adds around the room in precise or even precarious ways, such as during Stygimalock Lord in Delubrum Regine Savage, with its Doom Stack auto attacks, or dare I even say, Eden's vs. Iconoclasm Savage's adds phase, which regrettably I don't have footage of and is commonly disliked, but I think if I could go back and try it again, I'd probably be a lot better at it now than back during Eden's verse. We later had the Birds adds phase during Asphodelos the Third Circle Savage, which also involved moving adds around the room to ensure they die in specific positions. Many new tanks in Endwalker likely experienced this kind of phase first in Hydaelyn Extreme and hopefully were more prepared for P3S birds as a result. The third phase is the longest, starting with a raid wide and introducing a signature mechanic for the rest of the fight, albeit the first time is quite unique compared to later on. That would be light waves which are slow-moving, rectangular AoEs that are always active and crawl from outside the arena straight across it. During the first iteration, an array of crystals appear on the arena, and when the light waves touch the crystals, players must be behind another crystal out of line of sight of the one contacted by the light wave, or else they'll take damage and a vuln. This mechanic is really cool because it also introduces more agency. The first time it occurs after two light waves contact two crystals, the boss will hit each roll, tanks, healers, DPS, with a cone, forcing players to separate behind a different crystal per roll and out of line of sight of the final south crystal. This ensures that the cones don't overlap, and it requires a plan of which role is going behind which crystal in order to solve the mechanic. Once again, in contrast to Zodiac Extreme, this is now demanding more player responsibility and independence. It's followed by a sequence that can be dodged by the group together, where players rotate around a central crystal, dodging another sequence of light waves contacting the outer crystals, and then a frontal AoE from Hydaelyn in a random corner. After light waves, most of the mechanics from phase 1 reappear in the rest of the fight in various places, but there's still a few new things too. Randomly, the timeline can diverge and do either Parhelion or Parhelic Circle first. Timeline divergence is also something that returns quite infamously later in the expansion in Abyssos, the 8th Circle Savage, so we'll be seeing that again when we get to that video, but for the time being, basically both mechanics will occur in a full duration pull of the fight, it's just the order of execution that is random. Parhelion is a simple mechanic of telegraphing chakrams around the edge of the room in a 1-2-3 order and then forcing players via a crystallized water mechanic to separate into two light parties for stacks while they make a dodge around the room in accordance with the chakram order as they shoot back across the room. The Aether data center where I play 
uh, Party Finder chose to make both light parties make the same dodge, with one party in melee range and the other behind them. But it was also possible to have the parties dodge while across from each other, enabling full melee uptime for both halves of the party. I really wish I had seen Party Finder doing this more often, but even if both parties go to the same side, with moderate mitigation it was possible for a full uptime 5-3 split with both tanks, both melees, and one healer in the front group, while the other healer with the ranged and casters go to the back group. Parhalic Circle was more of a spread mechanic, occurring in combination with Crystallize Ice and requiring players to read a moderately complex telegraph involving explosions at the tips of a pattern of green lines on the floor, followed by ice spreads. As Asphodelos the Third Circle Savage teaches us later on in the expansion, players handle spreads better with a plan, and perhaps that was the educational purpose of Parhalic Circle appearing within the entry-level Extreme Trials at the start of the expansion. It also happens to function similarly to the archaic Rock Breaker mechanic from Anabasios the Ninth Circle Savage later in the expansion. After these two are over, aside from more recurring Phase 1 mechanics, all that's left is the second iteration of Light Waves, in which crystals are no longer involved and the waves simply creep in from all directions, with a safer corner becoming apparent after identifying which wave is coming in off-center. Players take a multi-hit stack in the safe spot and then center up for a combination of prior mechanics, for example, a full stack Shining Saber followed by Crystallized Water Light Party stacks, demanding that players group up and then split in quick succession. A couple of repeated mechanics later and the fight ends with an enrage that should be somewhere around the 11 minute mark, but may vary in total time depending on how fast or slow the adds phase was. I recall the damage check being very forgiving, with many pulls still clearing despite many deaths along the way. The difficulty level and mechanics are good for the second extreme in the expansion, teaching players to read a mix of caspar and non-caspar telegraphs, containing a moderately complex ad phase, and having more personal responsibilities in the form of role-based separation as well as light parties and cardinal intercardinal spread positions or clock spots. These teach very different skills to newer raiders than Zodiac Extreme did, and together the two trials cover a wide array of raiding basics that players will see again if they move on to future high-end duties. While I said a lot in the prior video that Zodiac Extreme is an ideal entry-level high-end duty, both of these encounters work well in this context when done in order. For as many new raiders as I witnessed clearing Zodiac Extreme, I saw most go on to clear Heidelin Extreme as well. It feels like a natural step from one to the next, and for two trials that released with the expansion, that's the ideal case. At the time of this video, it is currently patch 6.4, and as such, even beginner raiders who keep up with normal mode rewards or have crafted gear are now way overgeared for this extreme trial, which required item level 560 to enter and rewarded item level 580 accessories. Overgeared players will generally kill the boss early, skipping mechanics or permutations of mechanics, as well as taking less from damage sources in the fight. As a matter of fact, I have to admit that back in 6.0, I had no plans to make this video series, and as such, I failed to ensure that I recorded footage of this extreme trial from back then. As a result, in the interest of keeping my production times low, the footage that you've been looking at throughout this video is from a very overgeared party finder mount farm party with a non-standard lineup wherein we skip several mechanics throughout the encounter and the incoming damage is far, far lower than at launch. Unfortunately, this also means that some mechanics discussed aren't even shown in the footage. For me, it just isn't practical to organize people to clear an old trial at minimum eye level just so I can record some footage. Thankfully, for the rest of Endwalker's high-end duties, with the exception of one other extreme trial from patch 6.2, uh, I do have the footage I need. As an additional side note, I won't be continuing to make these notes about overgearing for the rest of this series. I only mention them in this video and the prior trials video because of how heavily I'm leaning on the entry-level raider perspective for my understanding of these trials difficulty tuning. Anyway, due to the overgearing, 
players looking to have a more authentic experience with this fight should consider using the minimum item level duty finder setting or use era appropriate gear such as eye level 570 moonward gear available for the sack of nuts currency from the hunt rewards vendors in aesthetic terms this arena is a treat to look at with the iconic Mother Crystal floating off in the distance to the north, and Heidelin looking just like the Yoshitaka Amano concept art that has existed since the game's inception. When Heidelin performs the Mother Crystal symbol and weapon symbol indicators, upon executing the associated mechanics she actually equips the relevant weapon to her character model and will generally use it until the next time one of these mechanics occurs, adding a very welcome and rather unusual detail to the fight. This trial is also full of visual themes and callbacks to past parts of the game. Her three weapon stances, Dancer, White Mage, and Paladin, as well as several of the mechanics like Parhelion, are callbacks to the Solo Duty vs. FNAF from the MSQ. The Ads Phase 6 Crystals is reminiscent of the ones that are collected in A Realm Reborn and then unbound and collected again throughout Heavensward. And the Light Waves mechanic is, without a doubt, a reference to the Flood of Light that occurred in the first, a major fixture of Shadowbringer's setting. Simply put, it's flashy, bright, and stunning, exactly what I'd have imagined a showdown against Hydaelyn should look like. A personal favorite is when the whole arena background becomes prismatic and iridescent during the ads phase. This encounter absolutely delivers sonically as well. The music for this encounter, Your Answer, seriously impresses. As a high-energy orchestral battle music reimagining of the Final Fantasy XIV A Realm Reborn classic Answers, the song is energized by a very active, powerful rhythm section and fits very well with Heidelin, whose perspective has always seemed to be the one Answers lyrics are written from, and was strongly reinforced by a key climatic cutscene in Endwalker. Now that I've got my own housing plot in the game, the Your Answer Orchestrian Roll was one of the first ones I've ever crafted from a faded Orchestrian Roll loot item. Heidelin's English voice acting, which is the version I am familiar with, is powerful and awe-inspiring. After spending a significant portion of the Endwalker MSQ with this voice actress by way of Heidelin's past identity as Vinat, it all leads up to this moment, this challenge she has issued to the Warrior of Light and the Scions, and the voice actress delivered a stunning performance. Especially neat for fans of the lore is the recontextualization of the hear, feel, think lines from all the way back in the beginning cutscene sequences of A Realm Reborn, which occurred during this encounter's ads phase. Even through multiple runs farming extreme for rewards, I never got tired of hearing the music or these voice lines. All things considered, I felt that this trial was a worthwhile step up from Zodiac Extreme, introducing more personal responsibility and becoming somewhat less carryable, at least in terms of not being able to mark a single designated mechanic reader with a sign to play follow the leader with. The trial's mechanical design is mostly very typical for FF14, apart from the line of sight aspect of the first light waves, which is an idea that I'd like to see making a return, as I feel like line of sight mechanics are normally the stuff of dungeons or alliance raids at most, and are rarely dialed up to the high end duty level. If you made it all the way here, thanks for watching and please consider subscribing. It helps the channel to grow and keeps you up to date on any new videos. Thank you and see you in the next one.